So here we are at the start of Unit 4. Um, deals mainly with the banking system. And so this is just the introduction, savings, investment, and the financial system. So we'll start out with savings and investment. Um, this is probably the most important part of this PowerPoint. Um, so as we know, businesses or firms invest in capital, factories, malls, machinery, tractors, ovens, food trucks, you name it. And oftentimes businesses don't have the cash on hand, so they borrow money. Uh, that's how they're able to finance these projects. And so we need to sort of understand the relationship between savings and investment. You can look in Krugman's book and he goes through a lot of ways to get here, but the bottom line is that savings equals investment. So in other words, the money that is put into banks, we're saving, but what that savings does is that's being lent out to people who want to invest. And so um, to understand savings and investment, that's an important idea here. And savings can come from domestic sources or they can come from foreign sources. People will put their money into this country if they can earn a higher return. We'll talk more about this as we get into Unit 7, which is the foreign exchange market, but um, understand that it can come from domestic or foreign, foreign sources. Okay, so the financial system. Um, financial markets, this, these are places where household invest their savings uh, by purchasing financial assets. And we're going to talk about these um, you know, throughout the rest of the PowerPoint. Um, all an asset is is a claim right? It's not anything necessarily tangible, uh, especially now with computers, that entitles the buyer to income at one point from the seller. So if I buy a bond, if I buy a stock, a mutual fund, a CD, all this says is at some time in the future, this person owes me money for what I, pay, what I bought from him or her. And so a physical asset is something that's tangible that gives the owner uh, the right to sell or dispose of it as they see fit. Right, So I can buy a tool, a machine. I can buy uh, a boat, a piece of art. Those are physical. Uh, those are easy, easily bought and sold. Uh, I can sell it whenever I want. Um, financial assets are not tangible. Um, some examples of financial assets, stocks, bonds, bank deposits, and so on. So three main roles of a financial system. The first one is to reduce transaction costs. Okay, um, Borrowing could be a costly endeavor if it weren't for banks. Banks make it easy to bring people together and they try to keep transaction costs down. Obviously, there's some fees associated with this, but... Um, you know, people don't have to search high and low. Now there's websites like Lending Club and things like that where you can just go online and lenders come to you. And so they try to make it easier and less costly to allow uh, firms and individuals in some cases to borrow money. The next is to reduce risk. Um, banks, financial institutions, you know, when they're lending out a lot of money, that can be difficult. Right, they, they you know expose themselves if people don't pay them back, and so diversification, allowing a number of people to invest in a project, allowing companies to sell stocks, selling bonds, this reduces the risks of those loans, so the bank doesn't assume all of the risk. Um, the stocks in the stock market is a good example uh, to spread some of the risk among a number of people, and then finally provide liquidity. Liquidity is something we're going to be talking a lot about, um, and that is the ease at which um, assets can be converted into cash that is usable, okay? And so the easier something is to be able to be cashed out, that's something the banks provide, right? So if you own an asset, you should be able to make it into something usable. For example, I own a house. That's very hard for me to turn into a liquid asset. I have to sell it, get the cash, all these different things. Of course, it can be done, but it's not that easy. And so banks try to provide assets that are easy to become liquid assets. 
So here are some more types of financial assets. We have loans. This is uh, an agreement between a lender and a borrower, right? I want to borrow money. I walk in. I say, hey, I want to buy this. And the bank puts us together, okay? Um, and I'm able to finance whatever it is I might want to finance. Then we have bonds. Well, we'll talk a lot about bonds in this unit. Um, what the person selling a bond does is they promise to pay some interest on that bond periodically, whether it's three times a year, twice a year. Um, and then at the end of the term, they will pay back the entire value of the bond. Bonds are used, maybe you parents were involved in the bond issue with the school board. This is how they finance um, the refurbishment of our school. Uh, you hear bond issues with stadiums. So I can buy a $10,000 bond that would go to the city government. They use it to build the stadium. And then at some point in the future, I'm going to get back not only my $10,000, but interest along the way. Loan back securities. Um, these are um, taking a number, a variety of loans, putting them together, and then selling shares. This was actually one of the things that kind of led to the financial crisis. Uh, banks took mortgage loans, car loans, home loans, student loans, put them all together, sold chunks of them, and then when the home loans went bad, the entire loan went bad. And this is called securitization. And it's kind of ironic because it wasn't really that secure at all. And if we get a chance, we'll talk more about uh, how this happened. And then finally, we have stocks. This is probably something you're familiar with. We really don't talk a whole lot about the stock market in this class. It's just not really part of macroeconomics. But stocks are basically a uh, share of ownership in the company. So if you, you know, Apple, you think Apple does a great job, you can buy 100 shares of Apple. And when the company does well, you get to share in that growth, okay? And uh, that's what stocks are. Next, we're going to move on. Well, here is a uh, graphic that shows what Goldman Sachs started to do, right? Um, if you look, uh, they started to sell many more mortgage-backed securities as we got into 2006, 2007, right? Almost seven times more in 2007 as in 2002, and in order to hedge their bets, because they had so much risk in these mortgage loans, they ended up buying insurance on those loans to protect against their uh, exposure. And so you can see right when the Great Recession kind of happened in 2006, 2007, things really started to take off. And this is one of the big uh, problems that led to the Great Recession. And now we're going to get into financial intermediaries, right? We have mutual funds. Mutual fund is a, uh, a place you can go that creates basically a stock portfolio. So they try to diversify. So they'll, you know, take shares from different companies and sell them as an individual fund. And so, you know, if you want to invest in green energy, but you don't want to invest in one company, you can invest in a mutual fund that deals with a number of different companies. Uh, pension funds and life insurance companies. Uh, pension funds are nonprofit, and they collect the savings of their members. They invest them, and then upon retirement, uh, they take the gains from that investment and provide their members with income. And then life insurance companies... Uh, sell policies, and then when that policyholder passes away, the beneficiaries get the money from that life insurance policy. And then finally, we have banks, uh, probably the, the most common financial inter intermediary that we'll talk about. Um, and they, again, provide liquid financial assets in the form of deposits, and they're able to finance things that are not very liquid, uh, like factory shopping malls, right? And so banks are really the main thing that we're going to be concerned with in this unit. And finally, you may have noticed that you didn't hear any barking, and that's because Cody has been sleeping this entire time.